universalism, justice, and punishment in the Bible. I would like to just quickly explain the concept of punishment and justice in the Bible from the perspective of universalist eschatology. I recently watched a Netflix original movie called Come Sunday, and I'm not going to give any spoilers if you haven't seen it yet, but the movie is about a fire and brimstone Pentecostal pastor who is convicted by God that Jesus Christ is in fact the savior of the whole world. But when he lays that message on his congregation without giving any spoilers, it doesn't go well for him. So this pastor, while he knows in his heart this is true, and he does have some scripture to back him up, he's at a loss to explain this doctrine to his congregation, other than he knows it must be in the Bible somehow. And because of his inability to articulate this doctrine to his congregation, he completely loses sight of the fact that God does punish sin in the Bible. Those of us who believe in the universal reconciliation of all mankind to God through Jesus Christ are not teaching that God does not punish sin. Please understand this. What we are teaching is that God's punishments are based on a balanced scale in an equal measure, are not purely retributive. In other words, the only reason God punishes is just to satisfy justice, but also his punishments have the righteous purpose of correction in love. That's why I want to talk about how punishment is related to universalism because it seems many universalists themselves don't understand how this works. I recently sent a text to Dr. William Lane Craig pressing him on this issue. How is eternal punishment consistent with God being just? I said the Bible clearly teaches that the penalty for sin is death, a finite ending. So why would Christ raise all of mankind from death just to infinitely increase the original punishment? This violates God's principle of equal justice, but it also contradicts God's omnipotence. Eternal punishment means that God's punishments are not effective, they don't work. So we have this back and forth, and he kindly refers me to his lecture on retributive punishment and says he thinks that death is spiritual, and I acknowledge that interpretation is valid. And while that is true, sin is being out of relationship with God, that doesn't change the fact that the penalty for sin is actual death as well. For dust you are, and to dust you will return, God told Adam. To fail to acknowledge that death is really death is to whisper Satan's lie, you shall not surely die. God imparted the death penalty to put an absolute end to sin. And while I am on this topic, I would like to note that the death penalty is not retributive justice. It is more the concept of consequential justice. Kind of like if you caught a terminal disease due to bad behavior that you knew was risky. Death is a consequential penalty, a consequential disease, if you will, that we have inherited from our original parents. For in Adam all die, so also in Christ all are made alive again. And that's where the atoning work of Jesus Christ comes in. Jesus Christ rescues all of mankind from the actual penalty of sin, which is actual death. And so the resurrection of Jesus Christ in rescuing all of mankind from the jaws of death presents a whole new problem for God. What does God do with all of us sinners that he's now rescued from death? He has to correct our bad behavior. And that's where God's punishments come in. His punishments are not purely retributive, but also corrective and teaching in nature. If my son threw a rock through the neighbor's window, he would be given retributive justice by me. I would make him pay for that window with his own money and clean up the mess. I would also make him apologize to the neighbor and temporarily take away privileges in order to bring about correction, not merely retribution. Even as an earthly father, my punishment has a twofold purpose, both justice and correction. Why would anyone think that God is less just and loving towards his children 
than we are. Even here on earth, we try to accomplish this in our criminal justice system, satisfy justice and bring about reform. Depending on what country we are looking at, we do this with varying degrees of success, but I have no reason to think that God's system of justice wouldn't be 100% effective in the end. Even if God's punishments were purely retributive, which is not the case, that demands an equal measure, not infinite punishment. The punishment must fit the crime. To give Hitler the same punishment as a petty thief is completely contrary to the concept of retributive justice. But universalists who say that God does not punish sin are misleading you. Universal salvation is not the teaching that God does not punish sin. Clearly punishment does exist in the Bible, but we see in the Bible that God's punishments have a twofold purpose, to fully satisfy his justice and also to bring about correction. Here are a few verses for your consideration. I think you can clearly see that God's punishments are based on an equal measure and not based on infinite duration. Paul warns us, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Notice that there's a balanced scale there. Most translations say you reap what you sow. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Notice again that Jesus Christ here is teaching a balanced scale of justice. In other words, the length and severity of the punishment you will be given is determined by you. How gracious and forgiving are you? No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. And that gets into why as Christians we need to forgive our debtors. We are not automatically forgiven by Christ because we believe in Jesus and are baptized, but we say, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. The reason we forgive is actually for us. Let it go and allow God's justice to prevail. It even works that way here on earth. If I owned a convenience store and an armed robber came in and cleaned out my cash register, I could say, hey, you know, this let bygones be bygones. You know, this guy probably fell in hard times. He only took 120 bucks. Let's just forget about it. But the district attorney is going to say, you know, I admire that you have a kind heart there, but, uh, you know, this man didn't just commit petty theft here. You know, he committed armed robbery. We have a bigger problem that I need to take care of. And so... Even though I forgive this robber, that doesn't mean the state is going to forgive this robber. You know, the state needs to put a stop to this. And in the same way, someone who commits a serious sin or crime, God needs to put a stop to that behavior. And so his justice is going to prevail. There's going to be both retributive and corrective punishment from God. So dear Christian believer, forgiveness is for you. God's justice is going to prevail either way. As I have explained in other videos here, punishment is not for all eternity in the Bible. The Greek word I own does not mean eternity. There are actually Bible translations that agree with that. Young's Literal, the Wymouth, the Concordant Version, the New Testament, a translation from Yale University Press and others. So I'm not alone on this. There are Bible translators who fully agree with me. So I would like to exhort you who are about to type in the comments and call me a heretic from the devil and tell me that your Bible teaches eternal punishment. Well, it's your mistranslation of the Bible that teaches eternal punishment in direct contradiction with the fact that the Bible plainly and clearly teaches that God's punishments are based on a balanced scale of justice and an equal measure. There are some people in this world we may not see again for a very long time. But even the worst of us are going to get out of God's prison eventually. God does punish sin, both to satisfy his justice and to bring about a harvest of righteousness. This is the meaning and purpose of punishment in universalist eschatology. This is both biblical and it's common sense. God bless you. Thank you for listening.